Hey, Dan here with Sweet Maria's. I'm going to take you through some steps on how to roast coffee dark in the Beemore coffee roaster safely. Um, if you're looking for tips on roasting light in the Beemore, we did a video about that as well, and I've linked to it in the YouTube description below. So check it out if you got a second. For this demonstration, I'm using a Beemore 1600 Plus, which is not the latest model. Um, Beemore recently rolled out their 2000 AB Plus. But in terms of functionality, um, these roasters are very similar with some minor differences. And so most of what I cover in this video uh, applies to both models. If you have the first generation 1600, unfortunately this video does not cover that roaster. Um, the reason for that is mainly that all of the roasting I'll be doing is in manual mode. So that means um, bypassing the preset roast profiles that Beemore's built into the roasters, which are all that are available to you on the first generation 1600. You're unable to switch into manual mode and um, manually adjust heat and drum speeds. We do sell an upgrade kit for the 1600 that comes with a new two-speed motor and uh, a, an upgraded control panel if you want to um, upgrade your 1600 to be able to roast in manual mode. So you can check that out on our website if you're interested. If you've read the Be More Manual, you've probably seen the deterrence to dark roasting. You definitely should read the manual. Um, there's a lot of really useful information about how to use a roaster and also in terms of safety precautions to consider when you're roasting. Um, the reason they put those precautions in there uh, are to keep you from having a roaster fire, which is a really bad thing, obviously. Um, and, you know, one thing that is unique about the Beemore Roasters, it has this heating element right here at the back of the roast chamber. And so essentially you're roasting coffee right in front of an open heat source, uh, which you can see why that might be cause for concern. In a clean roaster, it's really not a big deal. Um, chaff is going to spark every now and again, no matter how dark you roast your coffee uh, on that, that heating element in the back. But as long as you keep your roaster clean, there shouldn't be any issue. Um, but if you let smoke and chaff build up into an oily residue on the inside of the, the roast chamber, uh, sparking chaff can cause a roaster fire. So you gotta, gotta keep your roaster clean, especially if you're roasting dark regularly, because dark roasted coffee, um, produces more smoke and more chaff. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start a roast batch here, and I'm using a half pound of coffee, which is what Beemore recommends for roasting. Uh, to a darker roast level. And we're going to define dark roast as the beginning of second crack, essentially. That's what we um, consider to be the dividing line between a medium and dark roast. I like roasting a half pound of coffee anyways because it's, um, if you order a full pound, you have two roast batches, so it's nice and even. But, um, you know, you can roast more coffee, but you just have to remember that the more coffee you roast, the more chaff and smoke you produce, and the greater your chances of having a roaster fire, especially if you're getting into that uh, second crack stage. So I'm going to preheat the coffee roaster. Um, first I'm going to load my drum and have it ready. And I'm going to preheat the coffee roaster basically to, to wake up that um, heating element in the back of the coffee roaster and to warm up the internals of the Beemore so I hit the ground running when I start my roast batch. Um, it doesn't matter what weight you select at this point because we're going to restart the roast after I've loaded the coffee into the roaster. So I'm just going to go ahead and <clears throat> hit the quarter pound setting. It defaults to profile one, which is the hottest uh, preset, and I hit start. I'll let it go till it gets down to 6.30 and then we'll load up the coffee and start our roast. Okay, so we're coming up on the two minute mark and I'm going to go ahead and stop the roaster, load my coffee and chaff tray, and um, start my real roast. I don't think it's really much to obsess over as far as like leaving the chaff tray in during the warm-up batch or um, how quickly you get the coffee into the roaster. Um, it does affect uh, how much heat the Beemore retains, but it's really, it's not a huge deal. So here we go. Okay, so I've started the roast by hitting the P1 button. And I'm going to go into manual mode by hitting P5. You see the P5 flashing there in the bottom right corner of the uh, 
at display. And so now we are in manual mode, roasting at the hottest heat setting of 100%. I'm gonna also hit the D button to engage the fast drum speed. And that's gonna keep the coffee high in the drum, at the back of the drum, and uh, close, close to the heating element. So, Okay, so we're a few minutes into the roast here, and I had to drop my power input to P4, which is 75%. And that's because my roaster, when it hits 325 degrees F on the um, sensor inside the roast chamber, you can check that by pressing the B button. Um, when it hits 325, it goes into an overheat shutdown error. And that's a safety mechanism uh, that be more has installed to make sure you don't have a roaster fire. So when my roaster hits about 310 to 315 degrees Fahrenheit, I need to drop the power to P4, P3 if I, if I miss it, um, in order to slow things down just a little bit. And as soon as the temperature starts to drop, I'm going to go ahead and bump the power back up to P5. All right, at 11 minutes and 30 seconds in, we just started to hit the beginnings of first crack. I dropped the temperature to P4 as I was getting back up to that 325 threshold again. I'm gonna to try to keep the heat as high as possible, so I'll be toggling between uh, P4 and P5 in order to maintain a high heat uh, inside the roast chamber and push it on into second crack. Okay, we're just beyond the 15 minute mark and I definitely heard a second crack. Um, you can tell the difference because they're, they have a lot higher pitched pop to them and they sound a lot like Rice Krispies. We're just about one full minute into second snap so I'm going to go ahead and hit the cool button. So cooling is engaged and the heating elements in the back are still red hot. So you really want to watch at this point to make sure that no chaff, um, that not a lot of chaff sparks and causes any issues uh, inside the roaster. Okay, the roast is finished, so let's see what we got. Dump it in this tray. You can see at this point, there's really not a lot of oil showing on the surface. And that's normal. Um, I wouldn't expect to see oil on the surface for another couple days. So if you're hoping for oily looking coffee, you're gonna wanna roast it in advance and let it rest for a couple days. Here's a batch that was roasted to the same roast level and it's rested for about seven days or so, and it's quite a bit more oily. It just takes some time for those oils to rise to the surface. And just a quick note about using oil as an indicator of roast level, don't do it. Uh, if you're roasting until your coffee is oily on the surface in the roast chamber, you're very close to having a roaster, roaster fire. Um, oily beans can ignite inside your roaster, so uh, expect oil uh, after the coffee's rested for a few days but not straight out of the roaster. And a quick thought on um, coffee selection for roasting dark safely in the Beemore is I would steer clear of roasting dry process and honey processed coffees dark in your Beemore. Um, the main reason being that they produce a lot more chaff and smoke than your average wet process coffee. And so they will, um, they're more prone to creating an environment that is conducive to having a roaster fire. And then finally, just clean, clean, clean your roaster. Um, can't stress that enough. I, I cleaned this roaster before this roast and we'll see uh, how dirty it is from just a single roast. So, there's quite a bit of chaff. I mean, the bottom doesn't look like it's uh, showing any residue from the roast, but you can see it starting to already gonna collect on the sides here that's oil it's sticky so I would vacuum this out first 
wipe it with a rag, and um, I would personally run a dry burn just to be on the safe side. I hope that was helpful in uh, showing you how to roast coffee dark safely in the DMR. Um, feel free to leave any comments or questions below and we'll respond to them as soon as we can. And thanks a lot for watching.